<sighs> so many wires, test leads, probes. Uh, it will be one of these more lengthy videos, I guess. So, yeah. Auxiliary negative voltage for your linear power supply. So, if you looked at schematics for power supplies, you start to focus, yes. Um, you will often uh, see that there is a, sorry, a negative rail sorts of which you need to get, uh, in most cases, to get your output voltage down to zero. And that is parallel to the uh, main positive rail. And uh, you only have one AC input. So what we basically have here is a very simple circuit. Um, which is basically a charge pump or a voltage doubler. Voltage doubler because uh, if you measure the voltage from the positive rail to the negative rail, you have, of course, double your AC input voltage uh, in theory. So let's see what I've done here. So you noticed down here, out of the shot is my uh, gutted out old power supply and I'm experimenting a little bit here uh, with circuits uh, to rebuild it. And um, yeah, basically uh, this is our main positive rail output voltage here, currently 29.3 volts. Um, this is our, these two capacitors and two diodes here, which gives us a negative rail of minus 25 volts. So yeah, and why is that 25? Why is that 29 volts? Yeah. And on the oscilloscope, basically, we have our, yeah, in, how do you name it? Purple, purple is the name for that color. In purple, you have our, we have our uh, output voltage of the negative rail. So, yeah, it goes as, yeah, there's a load on it, as the, there's a, slight, very slight, only slight uh, load on it, a slight wobble, slight ripple, sorry. And we have our uh, AC input here, the blue curve. And okay, uh, the <laughs> the AC input is not a complete sine wave, uh, but you should ignore that for uh, the moment because <laughs> um, I'm using another mains transformer here to uh, have galvanic isolation <laughs> of that channel. <laughs> So yeah, there might be some distortion. Okay, so um, I think it's time now to have a look first on the uh, circuit itself, a little bit more in detail how it works um, before uh, we go to... So the basic circuit looks like this. Um, you have your AC input. Uh, Ignore the colors for the moment. That is just the reference to the colors uh, of the different curves on the oscilloscope. So your run-of-the-mill circuit is you've got your AC in, you've got your bridge rectifier, you've got a filter cap, and then you've got some load. And this is our positive rail and this is 
our negative ray. Simple. And now, as said before, we need some... Oh, bullshit. Uh, excuse me for a second. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't know if you, uh, the microphone picked that up, but that was a good um, three meters uh, or nine feet of uh, four millimeter square tubing uh, following gravity right behind my back. Uh, I meant to clean them, uh, yeah, to stow them away more safely uh, for a month now. Um, I belong to another project more on the mechanical side and uh, yeah now I've done that and we can continue. Hmm. Um, <laughs> okay so and uh, here we want to have our negative rail. So how does that circuit here work? Um, two colors. Let's start with, uh, I call it the first half wave of AC. And um, we're currently on uh, yeah, the level of detail of Wikipedia. So um, if we have here our plus and our minus in the first half wave, the following happens. A current is flowing through this capacitor and then back through this diode to resist diet of the bridge rectifier. To the momentarily negative side of the transformer. And this is our current flow in this direction. And the capacitor is obviously charging up in the second cycle <laughs> it's basically a two stroke engine this charge pump polarities are reversed on our ac what's happening now is current is <laughs> let's start here sucked out of this capacitor it doesn't go through this diode of course because we are positive here at the moment but it goes through this capacitor through minus to minus and well, if the current is sucked out, uh, some current has to flow in. And this current is basically coming all the way from up here through our positive rail filter cap. And this, of course, comes our bridge rectifier and which is the positive side yeah and then we have to do a little loop here okay or the right way around from the positive side we go through that out of the bridge rectifier through this capacitor through that capacitor and now we charging this one up through that diode through this capacitor to the negative momentarily negative end of our EC source 
why does that work? So the first part is easy. Okay. So um, let's say uh, we have here AC a certain I'll write this up here. This is all the easy stuff. We have here a certain E peak, which we'll measure. measure. Then this capacitor, obviously, minus two voltage drops of uh, the diodes. And this would be uh, EUF, uh, is charging up to our peak voltage. Okay, so at the end of the charged cycle we should have a voltage here of U peak minus two times the U forward voltage of the diodes which we are passing. Simple. So this capacitor here is obviously also charging up. I only uh, show in green the, um, the charging through this capacitor, but uh, if you forget about that and only say, okay, it's my bridge rectifier, this is my filter cap. Uh, yeah, it's also charging up to voltage as in this direction u peak minus two times the u forward voltage basically the two this would be the second one this would be the first one diodes uh, in our bridge rectifier. And yeah, where does that leave us? Uh, we have here U peak currently from positive to minus, so this way around, I won't draw it in. We have in our current pass one U peak in this direction and in the first cycle, the blue cycle, we charged up this capacitor. So these two voltages cancel each other out. Yeah, they work against each other. So this capacitor should charge up to our U peak AC. Minus, we have a voltage drop here, okay, and we have a voltage drop here. So it should also charge up to U peak minus 2 forward voltage drops, one diode and two diodes. That's quite simple, isn't it? Um, yeah, unfortunately, and uh, now here comes our blue, cyan, purple, and yellow markers. Uh, in I uh, go back to the oscilloscope view momentarily. So we have here a uh, blue, which is I um, already told you in the intro. Um, galvanically isolated uh, simply the uh, sinus output on the oscilloscope. We have all measured to our ground rail yellow this point here which uh, basically tells us when this capacitor will charge or when it's not charging. We have 
cyan, the voltage at that point, which will tell us when this capacitor is charging, and we have purple, our output voltage of the negative rail. Um, I will hold that up again, uh, but let's go back to uh, the oscilloscope view. So, back to the oscilloscope view. So, we have our output voltage, which is uh, the negative rail, which is purple. Yeah, all handy dandy. And uh, it follows the normal filtered, rectified and filtered curve. So, uh, yeah, discharge is, of course, because it's a negative voltage, uh, as it discharges, it nears our zero line. So, goes here, when it's charged again, yeah, you remember the second cycle and then it discharges. And the other reference, which is also quite simple, is the blue line, again, which is our AC input. And, uh, yeah, um, it's not really measured, uh, or not, I tweaked it to be that size, uh, because I said, uh, I use another mains transformer uh, to get it into the oscilloscope without blowing things up. Um, you know, galvanic isolation again. And yeah, uh, we have here 29.2 volts and we have here at the negative rail 25.1 volts. Why is that? Um, my Simple explanation, voltage Doppler was, I should have the positive voltage and the negative voltage. And yeah, including the diode drops, they should be the same, but they aren't. Why? Um, yeah, we are going to find out. So um, just be on the safe side. So we have uh, here 25 volts the negative rail and this is a max uh, minimum of minus 23 volts uh, I will and uh, max which is minimum of minus 27.6 volts. Okay. Um, let's not trust uh, <laughs> the Chinese instruments. Uh, remember there was that other video uh, perils of using cheap multimeters. That is not even a cheap multimeter. This is just cheap. Um, okay. Red test lead goes to my positive rail. And yeah, minus 27.6. Perfect, and it only goes, um, sorry, not min minus max, and max is 31.7. So if we have a look at that number, just at the peak voltages, uh, we peak, we peak, just at the peak voltages, uh, I get 31.7 volts peak on my positive rail, and I got 72.6 volt peak at my negative rail. So, where the hell are my, uh, Whoa, 
4.1 odd volts. Hmm? Yeah, 4 odd volts. Where do they go? I really want to know. Um, just to be on the safe side, uh, taking in these leads, they actually go to the multimeter. And let's try and measure. Doing that with the other test leads. The AC voltage. So AC we have it um, okay. Sorry. <coughs> Trying to write here. So U effective would be yeah, twenty three point one volts. coming out here and this is a peak voltage of a peak of 32.9 volts peak. And if I can free my probe again, we are golden. Okay. Let's just plug that back to the output. Too many wires. Far too many wires. And go back to the machine. Yeah. Minus twenty four. Minus twenty five. Effective. Okay, not the peak. So, yeah, looking again at the numbers. Um, we have 23.9 volt peak, yeah, on the AC, and we get out here 31.7 peak, and this is 0.3, 1.2 volts missing here, which is exactly two times 0.6 volts. I mean, we, we're not uh, drawing too much current through the diodes. Um, yeah, it's perfect, but it's not working down here. So why? Um, let's have a look at these curves. Um, so we have our AC, which is uh, perfect. And then you remember our yellow test point was this point against ground rail. And yeah, for the positive wave, it follows with a, a reason voltage drop. Yeah, along. That's all hunky dory. And uh, our scientist point here, measuring uh, basically what's stored in that capacitor in relation to ground. See, at one point, our capacitor is charged until it's full. And then it's doing some funny things. 
Yeah. But mm, it doesn't really make sense. And the <laughs> the cavite um, here is uh, our ground rail in respect to the two AC lines is floating. Yeah. It changes the potential uh, or, or the potential uh, to our AC stuff. And um, let us rewire, rewire uh, the oscilloscope probes and just measure for a moment uh, the voltage across these two points, how that looks. So, and the yellow curve is now our ground line measured against this AC line. And we see it's making a funny curve. So yeah, uh, now we know in <laughs> such a circuit, even simple bridge rectifier, your ground line is of, is of course in respect to AC constantly wobbling up and down. Um, we can also try it to the other AC line. Yeah, and you get something quite symmetrical. Okay, this is the one to the one AC line and this is to the other AC line. And of course, here we can see it much nicer. This is actually uh, the part where uh, the diodes here are uh, completely, yeah, this is 0 .7, should be 0 0.6, 0 0.7 uh, 7 volts, where uh, the diodes and the bridge rectifier are actually conducting. So we have here only, as long as they are uh, conducting, that is, we are in the green part in the negative wave, uh, we only have a voltage difference of 0 0.7 volts. Yeah, along here. But then for the second half wave, uh, that diode basically now blue second half this diode uh, shuts down it isolates uh, this AC line from uh, our ground line and uh, yeah we get a funny curve until we are again in the positive half wave hmm. Yeah, it will be quite a turn. I guess that really hmm, doesn't bring us forward, does it? Um, let's measure the voltages across each element and draw them down somehow. Currently measuring that voltage across that capacitor. It's time to give it a name. So C1 and the curve 
looks something like that. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, so basically, nothing is happening. Then it's recharging a wee bit, just a wee bit. And then nothing happening. And then it's discharging just a wee bit. And then nothing is happening. So, yeah, and um, I've also also measure uh, the exact values uh, with the multimeter across that capacitor. And I will uh, do that offline, try to draw that as truthfully as I can um, <clears throat> into our diagram. And uh, I'm sorry we have to go through all these steps, but uh, yeah, as you know, I mentioned uh, in the beginning that I only got the AC here because uh, I was able to uh, do a galvanic isolation uh, into the oscilloscope because uh, all inputs of an oscilloscope has a common ground, which is incidentally, it's not a problem in this case, which is incidentally also main earth. Um, usually, um, yeah, that can, uh, yeah, make problems. So we are measuring our voltages step by step. Be back in a sec. So, the results are in. As said before, we're measuring just the voltage across the C1 capacitor. And it looks like this. So, just here, yeah, when our AC reaches crests it starts to recharge and then it stays almost constant and just before uh, our AC comes down to its other crest it discharges. Okay and the exact voltages are minus 31.6 and minus 26.2. I decided to put that uh, on the negative side. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so our blue cycle is only very short-lived, just here where the crest is. And our green cycle, sorry, ah, too many leads in the way. Our green cycle is also very short-lived. Just a short leap for the other crest of the AC. Okay, let's measure Our other capacitor. What is that little guy doing? Yeah, we already know that picture, and uh, because our little guy down here, and I will christen him C2. C2 is measured, of course, to ground. Okay, I'll draw that in rather quickly. You don't have to watch that. So, um, so I questioned uh, second capacitor C2, and this would be 
curve with the exact values measured by the multimeter. And now things get clearer. If we go back to the C1 curve, so C1 does nothing. This is charged here, yeah, in our green cycle, to minus 31.6 volts. And yeah, I shifted the phase. No, I didn't shift it the face. Uh, 32.9 volts is our peak uh, voltage of our AC. And you see the minus 31.6 to 32.9 volts. There is a difference of 1.5 volts. And this is exactly our two diode drops, forward voltage of the diodes. Wonderful. Now our second guy, C2, is most of the time discharged, very slowly discharged, through our load. Okay. And only here, yeah, when we are basically near the crest of the green cycle, where C2 should be charged, only there for a very short period of time it is charging while sucking charge out of our C1. Yeah, but uh, the minimum voltage and or the maximum voltage, maximum negative voltage is uh, minus 27.5 and it discharges currently to minus 23.0. Yeah, they, we are here a tenth of a volt off uh, to our initial measurements, but uh, yeah, mains voltage is not that constant. So yeah, that's to be expected. <sighs> yeah, what next? Uh, then we question that one, C3. And I'll change the setup to measure the big guy. 67 microfarads. These are 10 microfarads, but just don't, just not get, let us not get into values just yet. Okay, so we are measuring now the voltage across our main filter cap, C3. So basically, we are measuring the voltage on our main positive rail and uh, it looks as expected. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit wobbly. Um, we have a discharge. Then at one crest of the EC we're charging. We have a discharge on the second crest of the DC we are charging. This seems a little bit smaller somehow uh, than this, at least on the oscilloscope. And then we are dis discharging again. So we are charging twice as much. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a full bridge rectifier. Okay, let me draw that in two. So, our <clears throat> C3, our main filter cap of the positive rail, behaves a little bit unusual. It behaves differently. Oh, okay. Just ignore what I'm doing now. 
that's so it's of course it's discharging in between uh, through the load that's it yeah it has to um, and for the first part of our charge pump cycle the that drawing the blue one where we're just charging up the C1 it looks like and we have a look and detail on the oscilloscope uh, on it quite normal so it's discharges until yeah two diode drops it's picked up by the crest of the AC and charged then it discharges again but then something funny happens it doesn't continue to discharge until it reaches the other crest of uh, the AC but uh, it's receiving charge and of course it's receiving charge here at that point because if you remember the green cycle when we charge up our C2 the current goes through C3 so in the second cycle of our voltage doubler charge pump we are also putting charge into C3 and well you could say we put charge in it before it's time so then it only has to yeah when these two guys C1 T, uh, C2 are finished exchanging charge it only has to do a little hop yeah again with the voltage drop uh, against through the bridge rectifier uh, through the other crest of uh, the AC I think we have enough now um, to calculate or to at least explain why our sorry our negative rail doesn't have the same voltage or lower voltage negative sign of course than our positive rail okay but before that um, I'll show you or try to show you this on the oscilloscope this difference okay you can yeah we already seen that there's something different between the first charging and the second charging yeah I've shown you um, of our 3C the positive rail filter cap and uh, let's just uh, not switch off let's put that guy in the center and oops too much scale it up a little bit can I get him down Yeah, there it's coming. No, can't get it further down. Okay. That's all I can do for the moment. But you see, the first, for the first half wave, we have a quite normal charge. So as soon as a uh, minus voltage drop, the uh, voltage AC voltage is gets higher than uh, 
the voltage on the capacitor. It is charged until it reaches the crest of our AC, minus voltage drops, and then it goes down. And then comes this little leg here. It's charging up before its time and this charge is caused by our second cycle. Yeah, remember the green cycle. I'm repeating myself, but uh, the green cycle. Yeah, current is flowing through the C3. It's charged up by our charge pump and then minus voltage drop again the normal charging through the bridge rectifier by the AC starts. Okay, um, I'll we'll think about all that a little and then come back to you with uh, hopefully some uh, of rule formulas for um, calculating uh, what voltage exactly you can expect here if you build such a circuit depending from your AC voltage and so on. So yeah, what mm, <laughs> can we further glean from that and maybe put into a formula. Um, I have little hopes to uh, hmm, actually yeah, calculate that voltage, um, at least not in this video. This might be a bigger drop. Um, but yeah, uh, let's take our circuit again and draw it, especially our green cycle, the one charging up C2. So everything that's happening between this point in time and this point in time, let's draw this a little bit different. Okay, forget that for the sec uh, just for the moment. So, uh, this is basically all elements of the circuit uh, that are necessary for the green cycle. I mean, we have our AC, okay, going through one diode of the bridge rectifier, going to through C3, going through C2, going through that diode, and back via C1 to AC. And if you have such a yeah a circuit, literally, <laughs> and uh, there's a simple rule. If current is flowing, the sum of all voltages is zero. So when is current flowing? Current is flowing when the voltage on this side, yeah, you see the polarity, our AC is here top plus in our green cycle. When the sum of the polarity, uh, of the, sorry, voltages on that side is minus, of course, the forward voltages of the diodes, is the same as the sum as the voltages on this side. So we have our UAC plus our UC1, they add up, minus our two forward voltages. You see the polarity is reversed compared to our AC and our C1. This must be equal to the voltage of C3 plus plus the voltage of C2. And 
yeah, this condition is given really only in this small space of time during a whole cycle of our AC sine wave. Um, yeah, and uh, simply this part uh, of the formula minus UC3 yeah, gives us UC2. So UC2 is our UAC plus our UC1 minus our UC3 minus our two UFs. And I think for the purpose of this video, I won't go uh, deeper into the math. I mean, uh, probably there, uh, maybe an electric electrical engineer is uh, watching this and uh, comes immediately up with a formula, but uh, basically um, all these values, they change over time, okay? And uh, yeah, you can probably work it out, but uh, just for now, um, we know that our UC2 gets bigger as AC voltage gets bigger. And AC voltage, um, yeah, is higher the later our charging cycle, yeah, our small time window here, starts. Mm, yeah, and there things got complicate, get complicated. Um, but let's get further to UC1. Our UC2 is higher when our UC1 is higher. And yeah, we can actually during the cycle get our UC1 a little bit higher if we reduce the ripple. And uh, you might remember or might know the um, guesstimate formula for uh, U-ripple for filter capacitor. That's basically U-ripple is smaller, the smaller, the higher the frequency and the higher the capacity. And it gets bigger the higher your current I is. Okay, so all we would have to do to increase our output voltage on our negative rail just a little yeah, C2, or negative voltage, would be uh, to increase C1. Um, then our voltage gets smaller the bigger UC3 is. And, I mean, in our circuit, UC3 being the main filter cap for our main rail, uh, we cannot really do something about that. Um, but it's worthwhile to note as the load on our positive main rail increases, the ripple would increase. And as the ripple increases, our UC3 would be lower and our UC2, our negative rail, the voltage would be higher with negative sign, of course. We could, would get a bigger negative voltage out. So, <laughs> especially in this circuit, our negative rail voltage depends on the load on our positive rail, 
And that's also something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, now I need the right sheet and uh, yeah. I mean, you could simply take the minimum and maximum values of all these. Um, you expect to uh, get a, mm, yeah, a guesstimate for minimum UC2 and uh, absolute maximum UC2. And uh, you can, whatever load or voltage regulator or other circuitry you have on your negative rail, you have could dimension it for that. But uh, let's have a little bit more fun and um, try these things out with um, increasing capacity of C1, basically reducing the ripple here to increase our negative voltage and uh, increase the ripple on C3, our positive rail male filter, main filter cap also to increase C2. Yeah, should be fun. <laughs> uh, we're currently showing uh, out of scale uh, the ripple on our main filter cap, the U3. So uh, yeah, our positive rail is about at 29.4 volts. Our negative rail is at minus 25.4 volts. And uh, if I cut my load, which is currently 15 milliamps about, so two 1K resistors here, plus 15 milliamps uh, from the voltage regulator and uh, that little uh, panel meter. I'm just cutting here the resistors and you see the voltage is dropping. And if I now increase the load, if I manage to do that, So now I have one 10K resistor and I need to put this here. So one 10K is about 30 milliamps. You see it's rising again. Okay. I'm not blocking anything. I cut the load, falling, put the load back on, rising. And you see how the ripple on our main rail decreases and increases. But it can make it a little bit more extreme um, by adding, sorry, uh, another 10k resistor in parallel, uh, 1k in parallel. And we now drawing the ripple increases, our negative voltage rail increases. And I have one more. I won't let them in forever because they get quite hot. More ripple on our C3, more negative output rail. So that's something uh, to keep in mind. And um, I no, I pull them all so they can cool off. The other thing, uh, just excuse me, I need another um, capacitor.
Okay, I had to go to the draw. Um, yeah, that's another 10 microfarad, I guess. Yeah, this way around. 10 microfarad, which I put now in parallel to our C1 to basically should half the ripple there. But um, Okay, just a second. So, yeah, I have here another 10 microfarad capacitor, which I will put in parallel to uh, our C1, basically halving the ripple. And, uh, yeah, let's put our oscilloscope channel there too. This time I'm yanking the right yellow wire, hopefully. And okay, that was the wrong channel, and channel one. Ah, there it comes. So that was our old scale, 10 volts per division and zeroed out. And um, yeah, I'm trying to uh, decrease the ripple there and we have a look at our negative rail voltage and try to put the capacitor in in the correct polarity. Sorry, I'm blocking the view for a second. Because if I don't... Wow! Look at that! 27. 27 volts. And, uh, okay. Pulling it is probably easier <laughs> uh, without blocking the shot, of course. Uh, so have a look at the voltage, at the ripple. Here it comes. Ah. Okay, if you're not convinced because I wasn't, uh, let's put the because I'm currently measuring from ground, let's put the oscilloscope probe, yellow and black, directly across that capacitor or capacitors, if I have two in. If I can manage. Yeah, that's the picture, you know. Okay, we are now, uh, first I measured, um, yeah, from ground to this point, and now I'm measuring directly across the capacitor, you know, the ripple. And uh, maybe I can do this live from this side. Polarity is right and decrease the ripple, increase the voltage. 26.8, lower ripple, I pull it again. Minus 25, higher ripple. And there is more <coughs> ugly fun to have. Um, 
going back to this picture for a moment, um, one thing we noticed is that we charge our big main filter cap, our C3, before it's time. And the whole circuit, besides the normal bridge rectifier stuff, is charging up our C3. Now, currently I have um, still a load on our main capacitor, uh, yeah. But if I disconnect that load and um, I'm going to measure now our main positive rail again. Come on. 30 volts on our main positive rail. Yeah, good Chinese instrument, 30.1 plus minus one digit, it's great. And I now pull the load on our voltage regulator. Our voltage is rising. You see that? 38.26. And if I pull the voltage regulator too, it's still rising and I'm switching off. <laughs> because uh, I don't want to blow up my capacitor. Um, yeah. That's a little Kavit in, um, <laughs> yeah, I hope the little guy survived. A little Kavit here. Um, using these circuits, and that's what they called charge pumps, if you can blow up your expensive main filter cap or load it to such a voltage that your bridge rectifier here will fail or you have other damages down the road. The important thing here is that the current which or the yeah uh, which uh, we are charging our C3 should be smaller than the current we would otherwise draw out of our C3 on our main positive rail. So if you have um, back here a voltage regulator with a very low coincidence, uh, basically no load at the end, you blow things up while with this circuit. Uh, yeah, I just wanted that to point out in case you want to build that by yourself and uh, fool around a bit. Uh, be aware you need to put a load up here and that load should be bigger than this load. Yeah, um, one more thing, one more thing. Oh my, yeah, my cap is discharged. I think I can put in back in my voltage regulator. And connect. Is that the right way around? I hope I remembered right. It's an old one. We'll see. Yeah. Everything's hunky dory again. The 50 milliamps plus uh, whatever that one is wasting uh, is uh, absolutely enough to um, yeah to compensate for this additional charge current we put through our C3. Okay, um, what I want to show you uh, at the very end is another variation of that circuit 
which is uh, you find it not that often in the internet um, but it basically and we don't need to go into the details basically looks like this I mean this end obviously is exactly the same yeah we have our uh, bridge rectifier or my main filter cap we have our C2 and we have the diode here where we can suck additional current through our C2 but our C1 is directly between our two AC lines with the diode. So our positive cycle, uh, our loading cycle for C1, when AC, the upper AC rail is positive in this case, is a little bit more efficient because we are only going to have the loss of one diode. Okay, our green cycle, uh, yeah, it's traveling this time the other way around through the bridge rectifier compared to the circuit we looked at, but it's it's the same. Um, AC positive, the lower rail, we go through one diode, through C3, C2, the other diode, and through C1 and back to the now momentarily negative rail of the AC. It's a wee bit, a wee bit more efficient because we have uh, on charging our C1. Oh, sorry about that. A little bit less diode losses. And just to show you, currently we have on our run of the mill circuit minus 25.2 volts and I have the other uh, variant of the circuit built up here and I'm pulling the right one if I measure the voltage here we have 25.8 one diode loss less and yeah you remember if I find uh, the sheet with the formula again our UC is UAC plus UC1 and our peak UC1 is basically in that circuit our peak AC minus one, two diode losses. And as I said, in this circuit, it's only one diode loss. So if, if you're really hunting for a few hundred millivolts, um, then this circuit is definitely for you. So I know this was a lengthy video and it was of course a journey and uh, as I will make another intro uh, I guess uh, to point out that this is not a tutorial and uh, not a lecture of some sort. Um, I mean I was working out this stuff as I went along because as I said in the beginning I really understand what's going on here and why don't I have uh, the full voltage on my negative rail that I get on my positive rail and I think uh, yeah even if we don't have the world formula for uh, calculating the exact voltage we can expect because it depends on so many factors. Uh, load uh, on your main positive rail um, is only one. The forward voltages of the diodes 
yeah, at least in the bridge rectifier, will change with the load, yeah, normally your forward voltage on the diode increases slightly when you put more current through it. Um, yeah, tons of stuff. Timing, uh, yeah, we would need tri trigonometric uh, functions, sinus functions uh, to, uh, yeah, calculate the crossing point here with uh, our AC sine wave. Uh, yeah, would be too much. Um, maybe one day if I'm bored, I do it. But uh, for now, I say thank you for your patience and... Goodbye.